Hello serverless people, Enrico here. In this video I want to explain on the top 5 use cases for AWS Lambda. If you're new to the serverless world, AWS Lambda is one of the first services that you're going to learn. So stay tuned to see these use cases. If you want to see other similar content, please subscribe to the channel because I publish a new video every Thursday. The first use case is creating a complete serverless website. Let's have a quick overview of the architecture. So usually a website is composed of three tier architecture, which is client-side, server-side, and a database. In the non-serverless world, it means having a web server sitting in a virtual machine, as it could be an EC2 instance, and again, the database, same thing in a virtual machine. In the serverless world, this can be avoided. So for the client-side, we can have an S3 bucket, which is going to host our um, client-side, and in front of it, we have an AWS CloudFront distribution. I've made a video about how to develop this um, solution. I'm going to put it in the link. But most importantly, since we're speaking about use cases for AWS Lambda, we're going to use AWS Lambda for the API server. So the web front end can send requests to the Lambda functions via API gateway endpoints. Lambda can handle the application logic and persist the data inside the database. It could be RDS, it can be DynamoDB, whatever like database you want to use. The cool thing is that API Gateway is basically forwarding the request to the AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is implementing your business logic and then sending back the data to the client. This is a very powerful architecture because you don't need any server running and it can be all your endpoints can sit on the API Gateway and Lambda. The second use case is the, a cron job. So when you have like to create backups, check for idle resources, or so generating like reports, rotating logs, uh, the best way to do it is with, with a cron job, right? Since it's a cron job, there are smarter way to implement a cron job, which are different than having uh, an instance running for 24 hours and having the cron job running on that instance, especially when the cron job is running just a couple of times in the day or every hour, let's say. As I said, there are smart way to implement it, and the, there's a way with serverless, and it's by using Event Bridge. The basically, Event Bridge has um, implements cron job. You can use the same language as the, as you would use in a server, and this cron job can fire an event and trigger a lambda function. Then the lambda function can run any job you want to run. It can be saving something on DynamoDB or dispatch jobs to any other resources in AWS. Basically, the fun, as I said, the same cron job you would do in an EC2 instance, but in, the, in this way is triggered serverless, and the consumer of the event is the Lambda function. Also for this one, I've made a video where, where I go through all the steps in the AWS console on how to implement it. So the third use case when you can use Lambda function is for event processing with SNS, SQS, or Kinesis. So when you have a distributed architecture, you need a way to process events, right? The most natural way is exactly to use a, a Lambda function, which can be a consumer for your um, SNS topic or for an SQS queue. Like an example of this is one of my uh, latest video, which is the uh, Lambda circuit breaker. As you can see here, this is the architecture of the circuit breaker and the Lambda function is the consumer of the event bridge. We can substitute definitely the event bridge with an SQS queue or with an SNS topic, doesn't matter. The important thing is that Lambda function can be um, the glue between all the services that you need in your uh, event architecture. The fourth use case, this is a very simple architecture, is to use the S3 object event notification to uh, modify a file upload, to move it, or to basically edit uh, every any single file that you uh, upload to S3. So imagine like you upload an image to uh, your S3 bucket and you trigger an event where the Lambda function is going to generate thumbnail for that image. This is uh, something natural for AWS Lambda because the event is generated from S3 and the S3 event is uh, triggering the Lambda function. This can also be useful for kind of more complex um, use cases where you store video files on an S3 bucket. Uh, without the Lambda function, you will need like an instance that like pulls the uh, bucket, um, you know, regularly. Let's say every, I don't know, every minute to see if there is a new file upload and then like process the video or resize the video, do whatever you want to the video. But you need like an instance that is doing this continuous like pulling into the bucket. The good thing, as I said, is that with the S3 events and Lambda function, you can do that 
and put this script to resize or so to rename the video file inside your Lambda function. And every time there is an event, like an upload, the Lambda function is going to be triggered. And you can see how easily Lambda can save resources on your uh, architecture. The last use case, which is the fifth, is when you, so when you integrate with external service, it can be any third party service. The way to go is usually having webhooks, right? The important thing about a webhook is that is his hub time and his responsiveness. If the webhook is not, is not responding, the entire application doesn't work because you want to receive real time events from this third party server that you have integrated and then reflect this information in your service. Since we are in the server's world, we want to implement the webhook with, you know, a virtual machine. We have to worry about with uptime and making sure that we can handle the load of requests coming from the external service. So we want to avoid that. And there are two solutions for this. Obviously, we're going to use Lambda function, but we can put in front of a Lambda function an API gateway if we want to go with a, like a more classical solution or uh, AWS create a new service within Lambda, which is called function URL. So basically now you can obtain a public URL straight from the Lambda function and use it as a public URL when other services can call your Lambda function from there. I actually made a video about it. So if you want to see how it works and how I create one, I'm going to put the link here. And that was it. So these are my top five use cases for Lambda function. Let me know in the comments if you use like all of them or if you have any other idea on how to use Lambda function. It's like an imagination exercise. So I'm very curious on how you use your Lambda function. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching the video.